Okay, let's go. So today we're going to cover very interesting stuff and we're going to cover a bit of relativity, just a bit of it. I'm not going to go into the details of the derivation of the relativity, relativity part, but what I'm going to use is that the relativity part infuse it with what we learned for the advanced physics on the electric field of a conductor. And I'm going to show you the last, uh, the last uh, conclusion is that actually magnetic force is as a result of relativistic, relativistic effect of uh, electrical forces. Now, remember that I mentioned that magnetic forces always comes about due to movement of charges. If you look at the equation, F equals to what for current carrying conductor? BIL, I. There's moving charges. For moving charges, F equals to BQV. There's V. Yeah, so there's always moving charges. No moving charges, no magnetic force, no magnetic field. So it always involves moving charges. Why so? Electric force doesn't need. Gravitational force doesn't need. But magnetic force needs. Movement. Alright, so let's see why. But before we do that, I'd like you to understand this thing called length contraction. Here we go. <laughs> We're going light speed already, huh? We're going light speed already. Now, what is length contraction? We have to understand it from the idea about what is length. Oh, <laughs> how do we measure length? So, say for example, Terence Chu is moving across the room and you're trying to measure the length of the marker. And then you're holding a meter rule in front. How, how, do, you, how do you measure? Are you going to measure, say for example, if we imagine that this is this table, the length of this table is the meter rule, and then I move, and then you take reading over here, then take reading over here, at two different times. Then you take those two readings, subtract each other, and call that the length, taken at two different times. Is that correct? Or not? So what should you do? Same time, exactly. That idea is very important. You actually need to, one of the, one of the techniques that I can do is to take a picture. When I cross the meter rule in front, imagine this is the meter rule. When I cross in front of the meter rule, take a picture. Then you can record the position here, position here, at the same time. But what relativity tells us is at the same time, at the same time for two different observers, is different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh? Okay, let's take a look. Huh? Let's take a look. Like, yes. How to stream the lesson? Uh, um, does anyone of you got com? Can I stream it? Yep. Okay. Well, she is trying to uh, get connection. Uh, we continue. I'll try to go slow. Okay, so that she can get connected and then um, talk to us. So let's imagine two beacon over here. This person is moving with speed v, and then this person is stationary. This person is x, this person is x prime. This person is standing on the platform, but it's not moving, relative to the other person. All right? So it is relative. Huh? Now, can you see that if this two light over here blinks at the same time, this person over here, these two lamps over here is in the trainer. So if these two blinks at the same time, this person will see these two at the same time. Make sense? But to this person, will he see the two lamps at the same time? Will he see the two lamps at the same time? And if it is seeing, if he is going to see the two lamps at different times, which one first? Three answers are same time, A first, B first. I give you 10 seconds to think about. Make a guess. Make a guess. Three, two, one. This train is moving. This train is moving. X is moving. X prime is stationary on the platform. Yeah? Okay. Is she online? <laughs> uh, the school internet connection is um, high speed. Uh. <laughs> high speed. High speed. <laughs> because all of you are operating at ultra high speed. Ah. You know what? I live in an era where the highest speed, the state of art technology is 56 KB. You know? <laughs> Now 56 KB is like, what? Okay, let's take a poll. How many of you think that same time? Okay, good. How many of you think that B will look like it blink earlier than A? Okay, how many of you think A is going to blink earlier? Okay, awesome. Because A moves towards this person, this person, right? 
A moves towards him as uh, compared to B moving away. You agree? So therefore, to X prime, in order for in order for him to see these two events as being at the same time, which one must blink first? In order for X prime to see blinking at the same time, let me repeat this, huh? For X prime to see the two lamps as blinking at the same time, do you agree that the two of them has to blink at different times for X? So for X prime to see the two lamps as blinking at the same time, which one must blink first? B first, right? Okay. Now let's take a meter rule now. Therefore, for X prime to make a measurement, he will have to make this measurement first and then followed by this measurement, this reading of this position. Because to him, it is simultaneous. In order for it to be simultaneous, he has to take this first, this event has to happen first, before this event. The two blinking, now we convert it to two events. Yeah? So in order for X prime to think that he is making the measurement at the same time, he has to take measurement here first, followed by a very short time later, this measurement. Now what happened to this position after a very short period of time? It will have moved to the right, left, up, down, in, out. <laughs> in. Oh man, again. <laughs> again. <laughs> to the right, right. So they agree that it will be this position instead of at this position. So can you see that this person X measured this length? Whereas to this person X prime is measuring this length. So to X he measures one meter, but to X prime he measures 90 centimeters. Now we are talking about space, which is volume over here. Eh? which is volume over here, which means that a moving cube is actually more condensed. Now, it has very serious complica uh, implication. Does it mean the density changes when you move? You think about this, huh? Does it mean the density changes? Actually, it does. And it is because of this density change. Mass that cannot be changed, yeah? Mass cannot be changed, but the volume changes. And therefore, the density will change. And this is the very premise that we will be building on um, to show you how the magnetic force comes about for moving charges. Okay? So can you understand, first of all, the idea when we make measurement, uh, you put this thing on this position over here, you actually need to make measurement at the same time. Most of the time, it is not applicable to us because the object is not moving. Yeah, but if the object is moving, you need to make the measurement at the same time. But the question is, the problem is, if you make measurement at the same time in this frame where this person is moving, it is not the same time as this person. And this person will measure a shorter length if the object is moving. And the length is given by L0 square root 1 minus V squared upon C squared. Detailed derivation can be found if you just Google length contraction. Okay? Can you see what happens when you go to the speed of light? Zero, huh? Zero. Huh? What does it mean? If you are traveling in this axis at the speed of light, what will happen to the universe? The universe becomes one line. In fact, nothing. That means, do you know, do you know what it means? Huh? It means that you're everywhere at that time, at that axis. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand the, the thing? If you're traveling at the speed of light, it means that you are everywhere at that, at that axis, which is actually something very interesting if you think about it. What, what happens when you travel at the speed of light? Okay, so what's the, what's the implication of this on the charge uh, separation and um, on the magnetic force? So let's consider this case where you have a positive charge moving this way and a current moving say this way. Yeah? So if a current moves this way, the electrons move which way? The electrons move which way? 
Hey, don't worry me, man. This way, right? Yeah, correct. This way. So let's say this moves at the same speed as this one. Not too complicated, right? Still can, uh, still can understand, huh? Now, let's transform if you are a person small enough to stand on a positive charge. What will you see? Yeah, what will you see? Do you agree that you see that the negative charges become stationary? And the positive charges move backwards. Make sense? Still can, huh? Okay. Still okay, huh? Now, still remember that in our previous lesson, when you have a line charge over here, that the electric force is equal to rho over 2 pi epsilon naught uh, times r. If it is, this is a distance r. Still remember this? Rho is the charge density, r is the distance of their charge away from the line charge. Still remember how to derive this or not? Check it out. Uh. Can I drop a, a hint that it is extremely important? Okay, yeah, extremely important. Uh. Yeah, because it is, um, it is a stepping stone for many things to understand, to be understood. <laughs> okay. So it's rho, which is the charge density upon 2 pi epsilon naught r. r is the distance from here to here. Now let's take a look at this. What's the implication of length contraction on the charge density? Now do you agree that initially the electron is moving, but now in your frame, in, the, in your frame standing here from your point of view, the electron is not moving. So the length becomes expanded. Right? Because in this frame, Sending outside, you see the electrons moving. So the length is actually contracted. But if you go into the frame where the electron is not moving, then it should be expanded. Right? Agree? Okay. Huh? So do you agree that the density of the electron is equal to the original density times it should be lesser? So it's square root 1 minus v squared upon c squared. Where else? the positive charge density, because of the positive charge now moving backwards, the length over which the charge is uh, distributed gets contracted. So it becomes bigger. Now can you see therefore that there's a disparity between the two charge density? There is a difference. And therefore, the net charge density is equal to rho naught over square root 1 minus v squared upon c squared minus rho naught square root 1 minus the net charge density because there is a difference in density now between the positive and negative and the net charge density is equal to this which is bigger minus this are you all still following? <laughs> okay we'll come back to this yeah we'll come back to this so therefore, if you were to simplify this as though it is any simpler, you okay? How do I get this? Because I multiply this over to here, common denominator. And then I can strike off, strike off, and it gives me quite a nice Okay, now I'm going to apply a little bit of math trick here. Now imagine that the speed over here, the drift velocity of electrons is usually in the order of few mm per second. Which means that, what do you think this value is going to be? If the drift velocity of electrons is about few mm per second, this is going to be? One, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. making good approximation is good physics. <laughs> So we got something quite simple already. Um, Elliot, can you just take a peep on the screen? Does it cover that board there? No. no, okay, then I'll come back to there. Can I? So let's apply this one now. The electric field, which is equal to rho net upon 2 pi epsilon naught r, is actually equal to now rho naught v squared upon c squared divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r, which is rho naught v squared 2 pi c squared epsilon naught r
which is equals to rho naught. There's a reason why I group it in this manner. Now you would have learned that f is equals to qe, which is equals to q times rho naught v times v upon two pi r f one naught. <laughs> If you do a little bit of research, this speed of light is actually given by this. Now, what does it mean? It means that 1 upon epsilon c squared is actually mu naught, and therefore force is equal to mu naught rho v times v q divided by 2 pi r. Now, what is charge density per unit length times speed? I got charge per unit length times the speed at which the length moves. It's equal to this term that starts with a C. Current, exactly. Charge per unit length multiplied by the speed is the charge per unit time passing through a point. So therefore, this is mu naught i upon 2 pi r. What is this? It's the magnetic field due to the wire. Can you see that it reduces to B, Q, V? <laughs> now you trace all the way back. You trace all the way back, huh? Go back, 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 back. The reason why we have force is because of electric field. Why do we have electric field? Because of net charge. Why do we have net charge? Because of length contraction. So does magnetic field exist? If we can derive that force based on other fields, Technically, it doesn't. It is a relativistic effect of electric field. But please don't tell that to the examiners. Ah. <laughs> Magnetic field doesn't exist. Please go and examine your question again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I've shown you, that um, actually it builds on relativity. And that's the reason why magnetic effect is al it always requires something moving. Because relativity depends on things moving. Yeah? Can it is a, probably a little bit difficult because it requires few ideas coming together. Um, read it a few times, watch it a few times, play it back um, when you're about to sleep or when you're sleeping. Lauren, are you, are you with us? Hello, okay. <laughs> well, this is the new age uh, classroom. Uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid. Do you understand, Lauren? The best test whether you understand or not is wrap off everything and derive everything again. <laughs> that's the best test. Yeah, that's the best test. It's like, do you understand? Yes, explain it. Then you know whether you understand or not. Wait, yes, go ahead. Can you explain why the uh, chance density uh... Okay, let me, let me come back to here. La. Take, one, take one step backwards over, over to here first, then I'll come to here. Yeah. So do you agree that there are positive charges and negative charges? Firstly, yeah. uh, if nothing is moving, this should be equal to this, which is equal to this only. Yeah, if nothing is moving, but because the electron initially is moving and um, this positive charge is also moving, so actually when I'm standing outside and making measurement, uh, the length of the electron is already contracted. So the the charge density that we know the electron to be is already higher than normal. So when you go back to the frame where the electron is not moving, the length gets it was previously contracted because it's moving. Now, when you are in a frame where it's not moving, it gets expanded back. That's why the charge density, the charge divided by a bigger length result in a smaller charge density. If you work this out, this will always be smaller than one. Yeah? So the charge density is smaller than the previous one. Whereas for the positive charge, in this frame, it is not moving, but in this frame, it is moving. So the same charge distributed over a shorter length caused the charge density to be higher. Now, which means that there is a net charge density now. Yeah. Now, over here, you got, let's say, 4 coulomb per meter. Over here, you only have 3 coulomb per meter of negative charges. So you take this minus this, you get the... Actually, it's this plus this, but because it's negative, it has a negative sign here. Yeah. Then you have a net uh, charge density. And remember that we talk about this equation over here, the line charge, the electric field is dependent on the net charge density divided by this one.
factor over here. Yep. Ken? Thank you. Lauren, do you have any question you want to ask? All your friends here understood everything. They understood everything. If you can see their faces, they, they look totally enlightened. <laughs> yeah. Ken, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask as well. Just shout out. Last Ken, anyone? Any questions? All alive? Okay, then I will close this part. I'll stop the recording. And